In this video, we're going to wrap up data representation looking at ASCII code and Unicode. So let's take a look at the learning target. We need to show an understanding of and be able to represent character data in its internal binary form depending on the character set used. The character sets they want you to be familiar with are ASCII code, extended ASCII code, and Unicode. You are not expected to memorize any uh, particular character code, and that's uh, extremely uh, nice because it can get overwhelming uh, pretty quickly. Reading an ASCII code chart is very easy, so let's jump right in. ASCII code stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It is a standard uh, for character encoding. Well, what does that even mean? When we talk about characters, we're talking about any symbol on your keyboard, such as letters, numbers, and uh, the exclamation mark, the at sign, the pound sign, the money sign, the percentage sign, all the different symbols or characters on your keyboard. But it also, there's a binary code for its action, like when you hit enter and you go to a new line, when you hit tab, when you hit the space bar, all those are represented by uh, binary code and on the ASCII code table, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. Now, all computers work with binary numbers on what is known as machine code. Programmers use high-level language, and then those lines of code are converted to machine code, a bunch of zeros and ones. It's converted to binary code. Now, when you type something, computers read the binary code for the letter or the action, and I'll put it to the screen. When you type the letter capital A, it doesn't read capital A, but rather 01000001. Now, the denary value of that is 65, but it doesn't read 65, it reads it in binary. So let's go to the chart and let's find the capital A. We know it's 65. So here is the ASCII code chart. This is a complete ASCII code chart. You can see here we have all the different uh, actions all the way to space. Here are all our symbols. Here are our numbers, some more symbols. And then right down here, we have the capital A right here and you can see that it starts with the denary value of 65 and uh, that makes it very easy to read so here's our binary code our decimal or denary value is 65. when i go to the next letter capital b you'll notice the denary value is 66. when i go to capital c it's 67 capital d 68 e capital 69 and it goes in order all the way. Now, if you look at the lowercase letters, you'll know it's a little different. For example, this capital B, the denary value is 98. That must mean the lowercase a is 97, even though it's not written here. Uh, lowercase c is 99, lowercase d, 100, and so on. So all the uppercase and lowercase letters are in order. So if you know your starting point, you can really figure out anything. So let's try an example. Uh, if the ASCII code of character A is 65, what would be the binary code for the letter D? This would be an example of a, t a test question they could ask you. And really what they want to know is, are you familiar with the ASCII code chart? Can you figure out the value of letter D if you're given the letter A? Well, we know the denary value of D would be 68. All we got to do is convert that to binary. So what they really want to know is, hey, can you turn 68 into binary? And we can, and this would be the binary value. If you know any starting point, you can find out any letter. Sometimes they will give you the denary value and you just need to convert it, or they could give you the binary value, have it convert it to a denary value, and then find this corresponding character. Work with what you are given and use what you know. So let's look at a past exam question. A binary pattern can be used to represent a variety of different data used in a computer system. The pattern could represent an ASCII uh, character code. The table shows part of the ASCII code table. So it says consider the binary pattern. So here is our binary pattern. It said what character is represented by this binary pattern? Okay, so this is going to be 2, 4, 8. We don't have 16. We don't have 32. We have 64. And when we add these up, that comes out to 78. So 78 is right here. That is not the answer because it says what character is represented by the binary pattern. So up here, we have it right here. 78 represents a capital N. It's very important that you make sure that your N is capital. If you make a lowercase N, it's going to be marked wrong. So you have to put that capital N. Notice this is worth uh, one point. It's an easy one point. It's an easy question. That's why it's only worth one point. And then a quick review. What is the hexadecimal 
for this binary code that has nothing to do with the ASCII code table. So I'm gonna go back up here. I'm going to erase uh, my values so I can figure out what they are. Remember when you're doing hexadecimal, you need four bits uh, per character. So this is two, four, eight. So that's gonna come out to 14. And then I have one, two, four. Okay, so we have four and then I have 14. Remember hexadecimal, if it's greater than nine, you have to go to the letters and my letters are A, B, C, D, E, and F and F is as high as it goes. A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. So I know I have 14, so that is right here. That is gonna be the letter E. So my second character, after figuring out this four, my second character is E, and I'm done. So with those two uh, questions, you can get two easy points. Okay, there are some drawbacks of uh, the ASCII code table. Obviously not everyone uses the English language or an English keyboard layout. And this is where Unicode comes in. Um, Unicode can code for a lot more characters than just English characters. Currently right now it can code for over one million characters. It can do characters that aren't represented in the ASCII code chart. It can even do symbols such as a treble clef. It can do many other symbols that you don't find in ASCII code. Um, there are differences, obviously. ASCII code only takes up seven bits per character, but it's limited to what it can code for because it only takes up seven bits per character. Now, Unicode can code for so many more characters than ASCII code, and you can switch between 8-bit encoding, 16-bit encoding, 24-bit encoding, and even 32-bit encoding to get even more characters. So the difference is Unicode can code for more characters, but it's going to take up more space. Um, now what is extended ASCII code? Now you may have noticed something in the first bullet. It says ASCII code only takes up seven bits. But before we move on to AS extended ASCII code, we have to ask ourselves, I thought ASCII code used eight bits. When we look at this chart, we see eight bits and you would be right. When we look here at the letter A, where's my pingo? When we look right here at the letter A, you can see that it's uh, eight bits here. But if you look very closely, you will notice that each of these characters start with a leading zero all the way from the very beginning, all the way to the very end. And when you look at the very end, you'll notice it has a leading zero too. So really that leading zero isn't needed. That's why it's seven bits. Also, if you look, there are 128 possibilities. Our maximum number is 127. And if you're new to uh, computer science, you may be saying, well, that's not 128. Please do not forget that zero is a value two. We don't start at one, we start at zero. So two to the seventh power is 128. Now extended ASCII code allows for more characters because it doesn't use seven, it uses eight bits per character. Changes the maximum amount of characters from 128 which is standard ASCII code to 256. So here's our standard ASCII code table that uses seven bits, but when we use eight bits, we can go beyond 127 and we can start at 128. And here you can see that we can start coding for a lot more characters that don't show up. So we see here we're starting at 128 and we go all the way to 255. Now you may be saying, well, 255 is not 256. Do not forget, we have that zero on the standard ASCII code that codes for a value two. This is not a new chart. This picks up right where the old one left off. If you look down here, we ended this ASCII code, the standard ASCII code uh, chart at 127. This is not a new chart, it just picks up and it starts at 128. So it's a continuation because we're using eight bits, we can get 256 different characters. So that is the difference between ASCII code, extended ASCII code, and Unicode. If you have any questions, post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next video when we start a new section.